Forza Motorsport in 2024. This was the initial idea for this video, but things have changed up a little bit. So we will be looking through the game and see how things have improved because things have improved. But I also want to dissect something I found out about this game that you should probably know too. You should know this too. <laughs> this is what I'm referring to as its dirty little secret. So of course, there has been some changes to the tuning system. This is one of the most important things that people keep talking about. Before, what would happen is to get the new things, you would need to use car points and spend a lot of time grinding out your car to be able to actually upgrade it and then find out that you might actually not even like it and you've wasted hours of your time. So this Aston, for example, I have not put any time into. It's a brand new car. So I'm actually going through and is it, wait, is it just tires and ballast? Wait, 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 wait. Can I actually put those on? It worked. Hang on, didn't it say I had a hundred car? Po I'm very confused. So what you've got is essentially a really butchered game. Oh, there you go. So now it's saying minus 100. So if I then press finish upgrades, Okay, so we can get more car points. Would I like to use credits to get car points? I've got 900,000. Yes. It's a very butchered game that is better than it was in terms of you had to grind the hell out every single car to see if you even like the damn thing. And I'm going to be honest, one of the main reasons I have a vested interest in this game is ultimately how it's going to affect Forza Horizon. Let's see how this thing drives. I've not put wet tight. This is going to go very, very well. Anyway, there are definitely times this game looks absolutely great. They do a really, really good job sometimes with how this game looks. And this is going to be the engine that ultimately Horizon is going to use. Can you please? Now, normally I would say it's probably going to be a little bit worse, but that's the old method of thinking because normally open world games are a little bit more difficult to render on screen everything at once there's a, a lot more that has to be loaded at once but that's not necessarily the case because this game definitely felt rushed out the gate and now we kind of know why it felt like that even if it was not scrapped like maybe we assumed there's a bit of a theory that the game was being built and then it kind of got just thrown away and they kind of started over based on the old engine there's a whole lot of stuff, but I have found something. There's a video I came across from this guy here. The exhausting development behind Forza Motorsport kind of explains everything. I'm going to play a little clip from it, but I highly suggest you actually check this video out afterwards. But this is what I've got to say about it. Everything was going well, and then something terrible happened. About a month and a half into the contract, I got a message from the other terrain artist who was teaching me and who's been there since like Forza 7 and 6. And he said, hey, I just wanted to let you know my contract is up by next month and I will not be able to resign. On launch, we were aiming for 20 tracks. And although there were other tracks that like had it started, there was a couple of little things in place. They weren't up to the standard to what we wanted to show to the players. This explains quite a lot, this video. One of the main points about it is that with the development of this game, and it seems like Microsoft games as a whole, and not even just that, Microsoft, as a whole, as a brand, tends to give developers these contracts of 18 months. Now, I don't know the financial stuff that goes on in America, but here there's been a uprising change in the rules that essentially says that if you are contracted for a company for a long period of time, and it's the only source of income you receive, you are an employee rather than a contractor, which means that then they have to uh, decide to either keep you on or let you go. A lot of people will let go, but the reason people would be contracted for 18 months and basically they likely won't get re-signed, this shows a wants to keep recycling employees to save money. For example, one big cost in America is health insurance. You don't need to pay health insurance if they're not an employee. But it really does kind of make you wonder, does it really make sense to do that? Keep replacing employees because it's cheaper to contract them rather than actually employ them, but then have that person teach a new person the ropes so they have to get into the stride. It takes months and months to figure out the tools and the systems in place in that development studio because it's going to be different per studio unless they're used to that engine, which is highly unlikely when it's a Forza game with its own dedicated engine. So they waste all their time teaching a new person and then after that person has got good enough, 
you get rid of that person and the cycle will continue. That new person becomes the new senior or head and then they get replaced and you get the idea. They keep recycling employees. But that's just kind of a little tangent I was going on. It makes sense that the game was a little bit rocky and overall a bit inconsistent. There are things that are not quite right. And hopefully this has changed since that. And the fact that that video even exists, like they made it and it's published still and Microsoft hasn't like tried to hunt them down. And well, they're probably now blacklisted from ever working at Microsoft again. We appreciate your duty. You, you have done well explaining this to us thank you we we got some kind of insight here the game still feels quite hollow it feels like they're playing catch up and then constantly swapping devs would be part of that like this screen here i don't know if i've ever seen a more unfinished screen in gaming never mind in a forza game because forza usually has this crazy level of polish and and, and quality that no game can kind of match. Especially when they've got a brand new engine. This just doesn't look right to me. But there is kind of a way to change it. I think it's in the livery editor. This will demonstrate exactly what I mean about the inconsistency of the lighting in this game. So right here, this looks wrong. It doesn't look right. The car is too bright. There's not enough shadows on it. I understand there's probably a big light box above us is the idea, but it just, it, there's no shadowing whatsoever. Now this is on PC. I'm on a 4080. This is kind of to the to the bloody moon so this is the default if i go to ambient you'll notice that well it's not even more washed out but if anything that looks more correct it's so bright in here that this maybe works a little bit better but then you notice open sky and you're like oh okay no 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 this looks more right more washed out still not quite there what about sunset we're kind of getting somewhere now i don't want to sit here and say this is perfect because it's still clearly not but it's an improvement in this garage system and ultimately any changes they kind of do here are going to equate to the next forza game matte paint clearly seems to be a weak point okay so my car is now callable too very nice let's go to performance upgrade upgrade yes 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 i think what's safe to assume is that they were kind of planning of course this new progression system was something that people requested a heck of a lot but based on Game Pass games and also Horizon, trying to focus on more playtime, it's pretty safe to assume that the idea was, well, they were going to allow you to grind the living daylights out of yourself to try and get these cars, which is what they did. But then maybe later have a way to purchase these with maybe potential real money. Not to say that that's what was going to happen, but it kind of would make sense. Let's get more car points. But thankfully, we just buy them with credits, which is absolutely fine. That's great. So now they can't do that. It's going to be interesting. Like, how long are they going to support this game? Every time I come into the game, I'm kind of hoping for a resolution of some significant features like the drifting or the lighting gets fixed. And the lighting maybe has got improved a little bit. But I jump into this menu and I don't know what to do. In Horizon, it kind of throws the festival playlist in your face. In the crew, you've got a map of playlists that come up straight away. In Need for Speed, they show you stuff. As soon as you jump online, they basically level up, unlock stuff. That's the idea. And I get that maybe that's the idea here is you just kind of race and then maybe buy cars and... Yep. It very much feels like a Gran Turismo sport situation, but they haven't redone the cars. <laughs> so what have they done? Realistically... I don't know. <laughs> no, that's not fair. They have improved the graphics and taken away everything else. Ah, oh, but you can change your suit in an incredibly well-lit garage. So the way they add stuff is through the career mode, which is pretty cool because none of the games don't add anything to the career mode as such. So I think, I think there's maybe some new stuff in here. I don't actually... Ah, there we go. In the featured section so this bmw was added to the game we've got an amg showdown and they're basically reusing content in the game or using tracks that are added to the game and i don't quite get why you would play this and not a seto course or something it feels like it's trying to be one of those games which is not necessarily a bad thing it's a bit of a shift in what it was kind of doing before but it's not a seto course something people often say is that oh didn't really know where to go with it. They wanted to essentially make a refined motorsport kind of simulator game and all the esports people pulled away from the game. Who is the audience for this game? It's kind of in a confusing spot. At the beginning kind of felt that way about Drive Club in where Drive Club didn't really make sense. But then the game came out and it was an arcade track based game in made up locations, not made up locations, but inspired locations that essentially allowed you to 
feel a car in a way that you couldn't before. Th this doesn't do that. This game, unfortunately, spawned Horizon. I mean, unfortunately for itself, spawned Forza Horizon and has just struggled since to really keep up with itself. But hey, I definitely think the lighting looks better than it did before. Maybe I just got lucky this time. Because before it was hit or miss. The lighting looks like it's improved. And I can make my garage brighter. And I know I will no longer have to grind my ass off to get every car that I want. But now what do I do in the game? <laughs> I think I'll go play Horizon.